Hi guys, today we're going to look at Journeys Grade 2, Lesson 23. Our title is The Goat in the Rug by Geraldine, as told to Charles L. Blood and Martin Link, illustrated by Nancy Winslow Parker. Okay guys, make sure you have your Journeys textbooks open to page 279 and we're going to start reading. Our story, The Goat in the Rug by Geraldine, is a narrative nonfiction text. This means it tells a true story about a topic. As we read, we're looking for a setting that is real, events in time order, facts and information. Again, make sure you're on page 279 so you can follow along as I'm reading. While we're reading, I want you to think about this essential question. How is art connected to the past? My name is Geraldine, and I live near a place called Window Rock with my Navajo friend, Glenn May. It's called Window Rock because it has a big round hole in it that looks like a window open to the sky. Glenn May is called Glenn May most of the time because it's easier to say than her Indian name, Glee Nashba. In English, that means something like female warrior, but she's really a Navajo weaver. I guess that's why one day she decided to weave me into a rug. After reading that first page, I want you to think about our characters. Who are the characters in this story? And who is the character that is telling the story? I remember it was a warm, sunny afternoon. Glenn May had spent most of the morning sharpening a large pair of scissors. I had no idea what she was going to use them for, but it didn't take me long to find out. Before I knew what was happening, I was on the ground and Glenn May was clipping off my wool in great long strands. It's called mohair, really. It didn't hurt at all, but I admit I kicked up my heel some. I'm very ticklish for a goat. I might have looked a little naked and silly afterwards, but my, did I feel nice and cool. So I decided to stick around and see what would happen next. The first thing Glenn May did was chop up roots from a yucca plant. The roots made a soapy, rich lather when she mixed them with water. She washed my wool in the suds until it was clean and white. After that, a little bit of me, you might say, was hung up in the sun to dry. When my wool was dry, Glenn May took out two large square combs with many teeth. By combing my wool between these carding combs, as they're called, she removed any bits of twigs or burrs and straightened out the fibers. She told me it helped make a smoother yarn for spinning. Then, Glenn May carefully started to spin my wool, one small bundle at a time, into yarn. I was beginning to find out it takes a long while to make a Navajo rug. Again and again, Glenn May twisted and pulled, twisted and pulled the yarn. Then she spun it around a long, thin stick called a spindle. As she twisted and pulled and spun, the finer, stronger, and smoother the yarn became. A few days later, Glen May and I went for a walk. She said we were going to find some special plants she would use to make dye. I didn't know what dye meant, but it sounded like a picnic to me. I do love to eat plants. That's what got me into trouble. When Glen May was out looking for more plants, I ate every one she had already collected in her bucket. Delicious! The next day, Glen May made me stay home while she walked miles to a store. She said the dye she could buy wasn't the same as the kind she makes from plants, but since I'd made such a pig of myself, it would have to do. I was really worried that she would still be angry with me when she got back. She wasn't though, and pretty soon she had three big potfuls of dye boiling over a fire. Then I saw what Glen May had meant by dyeing. She dipped my white wool into one pot, and it turned pink. She dipped it in again. It turned a darker pink. By the time she finished dipping in and out and hung it up to dry, it was a beautiful deep red. After that, she dyed some of my wool brown and some of it black. I couldn't help wondering if these plants I'd eaten would turn all of me the same colors. While I was worrying about that, Glenn May started to make our rug. 
She took a ball of yarn and wrapped it around and around two poles. I lost count when she'd reached 300 wraps. I guess I was too busy thinking about what it would be like to be the only red, white, black, and brown goat at Window Rock. It wasn't long before Glen May had finished wrapping. Then she hung the poles with the yarn on a big wooden frame. It looked like a picture frame made of logs. She called it a loom. After a whole week of getting ready to weave, Glen May started. She began weaving at the bottom of the loom. Then one strand of yarn at a time, our rug started growing toward the top. A few strands of black, a few of brown, a few of red, in and out, back and forth until in a few days the pattern of our rug was cleared to see. Our rug grew very slowly, just as every Navajo weaver before her had done for hundreds and hundreds of years. Glen May formed a design that would never be duplicated. Then at last the weaving was finished, but not until I checked it quite thoroughly in front and in back did I let Glen May take our rug off the loom. There was a lot of me in that rug. I wanted it to be perfect. And it was. Since then, my wool has grown almost long enough for Glen May and me to make another rug. I hope we do very soon. Because you see, there aren't too many weavers like Glen May left among the Navajos. And there's only one goat like me, Geraldine. This is a true story of a weaver and her goat who lived in the Navajo Nation in Window Rock, Arizona. In our story, Glen May is a Navajo weaver. Her rug is a form of art. That brings us back to our central question. How is art connected to the past? Why was that rug so special to Glen May and her goat, Geraldine? 